What if I told you you could make your images better by increasing the brightness and then decreasing it again? Well, as silly as it might sound, there is actually some truth to it. So today I'm going to be telling you how to use a technique called exposing to the right to improve the quality of your video. To understand why exposing to the right works, we first need to understand how a camera sensor functions. A modern CMOS sensor is comprised of photocytes, and each photocyte produces an amount of voltage equivalent to the amount of light that hit it during a certain period of time. For the moment, let's set aside how the camera processes this into an image, and let's just look at how the camera sensor functions on a very basic level. The main problem with these photocytes is that there is a limit to how high and how low their voltage response can go. Let's look at the upper limit first. As we add more light to our scene, the photocyte will produce a higher and higher voltage until it reaches its saturation point. This is effectively the maximum possible output, and no matter how much light we add past the saturation point, it will not yield a different output. What this means is that if part of our scene is too bright, it will max out the sensor and we won't be able to retain any detail. This is often referred to as clipping the highlights and should be avoided whenever possible. So that explains the upper limit of our light response range, but what about the lower limit? Well, as it turns out, the lower limit is a lot more interesting. Unlike the upper limit, which acts as a hard cutoff, the lower limit is more fuzzy. In a perfect world, there should be virtually no limit to how little light a sensor can respond to. However, we must always contend with the cruel reality that is entropy. The real world is chaotic, subject to all sorts of small and unpredictable variations in energy. In this context, this chaos manifests as electronic noise. The output voltage of our photocyte will always be ever so slightly fluctuating away from its true value. If the signal coming off the sensor is strong enough, it can overpower the noise and allow for a fairly precise prediction of the quote-unquote true value. But as the amount of light hitting our sensor decreases, the signal will get weaker, and our signal-to-noise ratio will get worse. As the signal gets smaller and smaller, the noise makes it harder and harder to tell what the real value was supposed to be. Eventually, the signal will be so weak that it's effectively impossible to distinguish from the noise in the system. This point is called the noise floor, and it serves as the lower limit to the sensor's response range. However, as I mentioned before, the boundary is very fuzzy. There's no hard cutoff, instead it just gradually gets worse and worse until the image is unusable. Now, you might be wondering what any of this has to do with making your image brighter to improve image quality, but let's take a look at how we can use this information to our advantage. Let's use this sine wave here to represent the variable light information hitting our sensor. And let's mark the upper and lower limits of our sensor's response range. Now, as I mentioned before, as we decrease the amount of light in our scene, our signal gets closer and closer to the sensor's noise floor and it becomes noisier and noisier until it's unusable. So to achieve the cleanest possible image, we want to set our exposure as high as possible in order to get our signal as far away from the noise floor as possible. Obviously, we don't want to overexpose too much or our signal will start clipping, but usually we have some room to play around with. <laughs> now, wait a second. If we're just going to be bringing our exposure back down in post, What's the point? Wouldn't the end result be the same as we started with? Well, no actually. The method we use to change our exposure matters. If you modify your camera's aperture or shutter settings, you'll be actually increasing the amount of light coming into the sensor. So the signal will move up and the noise floor will stay where it is. But if you modify your ISO setting or adjust the brightness in post-production, you aren't actually changing the amount of light present you're just manipulating the existing sensor output. So if you increase your ISO, you will make your image brighter, but you'll also move the noise floor up at the same time. This is why images taken with a high ISO are so noisy, 
Because there isn't much light present in the scene, the light you do have is going to be close to the sensor's noise floor. Increasing the ISO will bring the luminance levels back to normal, but the signal will be just as noisy as it was before. The same goes for modifying exposure in post, except you're manipulating the image after it undergoes processing and compression. So that's why deliberately overexposing is able to reduce our noise levels. We first open up our aperture to let in as much light as possible without clipping. This moves our signal up but leaves the noise floor where it is. Then we reduce our exposure in post, which brings the signal back down to normal and also pushes the noise floor down at the same time. So our end result is a cleaner image with reduced noise compared to exposing normally. This practice is called exposing to the right because a typical histogram represents higher luminance values on the right side. So pushing your image farther to the right yields better results. Let's take a look at this in action. I have my camera's ISO locked and I'll be controlling my exposure using my lens's aperture. Also, I'm shooting in S-Log2 and converting to Rec.709 in post, just so you can see what the results look like at the end of the chain. Here I have my image exposed for middle gray and no exposure correction in post. Let's take note of the noise levels. Next, I'm going to expose my image to the right. The brightest part of the image, my face, is exposed so that it's almost but not quite clipping. As we can see, the image is much brighter but not any noisier. Finally, in post, I'm going to reduce my exposure back down to a normal level. We can now take a look and see that the exposed to the right image has reduced noise compared to the normally exposed image, even though the ISO setting is identical between the two shots. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. My name is Cayman Crocker, signing off.